While Americans uh, differ in their views on almost every social issue, almost all Americans embrace the idea that every child should have the opportunity to develop their strengths and interests and to overcome the obstacles that prevent their flourishing. That is, opportunity to thrive is something most Americans want for all children. Yet, as a result of the extraordinary inequality in income and wealth in the United States, uh, children in low-income families have much less opportunity to thrive than do children coming into being in more affluent families. A fact that many Americans do not recognize, or those that do, many will not accept, is that children growing up in poverty in the United States are much more likely to live in poverty as adults than children growing up in any other Western country. In other words, intergenerational upward mobility is much lower in this quote land of opportunity than it is in any other Western country. Now, the, the uh, federal government and many states, including Massachusetts, have programs to support children, food stamps, uh, Medicare. But one problem is that uh, many children who are entitled to those access to those programs don't get those benefits. And that is where City Connects comes in. In creating City Connect, Mary took on the challenge of turning the rhetoric that every child should have the opportunity to thrive into reality for a significant number of children, especially children living in Parliament. Importantly, the benefits of City Connects accrue to more children than just those who receive medical supports. Careful research over the last 10 years has shown that when a child faces an obstacle, such as lead paint poisoning, that, leads, that uh, results in the child acting out in the classroom, the other children in the class learn less, and the learning losses are long lasting. So the benefit of enabling one child to thrive accrue to a great many children. This makes it easy to understand why teachers want to understand what City Connect does, embrace it, and do so because it helps them to do their job better. Hi everyone, good evening. Um, my name is Leah McKetty. I am principal of Winthrop Elementary School in Boston. As Mary said, it was featured in this video. And just a little bit of background about Winthrop Elementary School. We are located in Dorchester, Massachusetts. We serve a low-income community. We have students that are struggling in many different ways, yet they come into school every day ready to learn, excited about opportunities that a school has to give them, and we want to provide them with every opportunity available. And so when Mary asked the question, you know, what do students really need to thrive? You know, it made me think about, you know, we're in Boston College, and Winthrop Elementary School has a similar mission. So I just want to just begin just by reading Winthrop Elementary School's mission, and I just want you to ponder on the mission just for a little bit. So the John Winthrop Elementary School is a nurturing community that strives to create dynamic learning experiences that challenge, engage, and motivate our students to become lifelong learners. We value a strong work ethic and a healthy sense of self, balanced with a clear respect for the rights and differences of others. Immersed in this environment, our students will become not only critical thinkers who are responsible, resilient, creative, and inquisitive leaders, but also productive community members. So just ponder on that just for one minute. Not one minute, because Mary will give us one. <laughs> A couple of seconds. So thinking about thriving and thinking about our mission, you know, we really want our students to be accountable for themselves. We want students to just have intrin intrinsic motivation for their learning and interests. But unfortunately, the educational environment is, is different. You know, we're in an institution. And so in order to thrive, when students come, they need so many other things. 
So even though we want them to learn, we have this mission, we want students to come into our doors and we want to welcome them with open arms, there's so many barriers that pre pre prevent them from thriving. And so we're blessed, honestly, you all, to have City Connects. City Connects has impacted us over the past, I've been a principal for about 11 years at John Winthrop Elementary School, and we used to be a turnaround school, and we've had it since the start. We're now an innovation school, and it has transformed our community. When I say community, it's not only our students, we're a community. And so thinking about our students and thriving, when they come in our doors, for example, as Dean, what's the last name? Wortham, sorry, <laughs> Dean Wortham was saying, you know, a student may need glasses, right? Or a student may need something to learn. Um, so what happens is City Connects and they come together and they have these conversations and they pair with our, they match up with our teachers and they really figure out what needs and resources our students need. So for example, um, when we're thinking about resources, we have partners that they connect with, that our students may come to school just needing clothes, and they have all of this on their mind in order to learn and in order to thrive. So it's, it's just coming together as a community and really thinking about all the resources that our students need. So in addition to resources, relationships are huge. Relationships are huge. And our students can't learn unless they have those relationships. So for example, if I'm walking through the hallways, as you, know, you saw in that video, or you, students are wanting to get started on learning, and they're not getting along with their teacher, times are different, you all, after the pandemic, with social media, and many different things. And the students need someone to connect to. So not only do they need resources, they need connections in order to learn. So they may not connect with their teacher, but they may need additional resources. And this is something that is really, really beneficial to help them learn. So one more thing is also social emotional supports. So as I said before, students are really learning differently now. And I know you said, Mary, I look, <laughs> I look young, but at the same time, I'm, everyone's looking, everyone's learning differently. And so technology plays a huge role in how students learn and really thinking about how the teacher connects with, how the teacher connects with the parents, how the teacher connects with the community, and City Connects has really, really helped balance that all and really help students really meet these needs in order to really learn and thrive. So I would say the major things um, in terms of addressing school, addressing students' needs, resources, relationships, and social emotional supports in order to really help students really thrive. Thanks. Thank you, Dean Wortham and Provost Quigley and, and all of you who contributed to all of this work as Mary put out there in this room and, and also to my fellow panelists, Leah and Dick. Um, nice job minutes there. <laughs> um, I, as a developmental psychologist, am particularly interested in children's growth over time and the processes of stability and change that characterize that growth. And I, when asked to consider this question, uh, approached it with that mindset. And I do believe, in fact, and will argue, that thriving is a developmental process that occurs and unfolds across time as opposed to a moment of time. And I would also argue, as, in a way that I think will resonate with other panelists with the film and everything that Mary has developed and designed and studied, I believe that that process is characterized by an accumulation of a diverse array opportunities. The kinds of opportunities that we heard about, not just about learning and skills and strategies, but also about hope and joy and love and relationships. Right? I don't think any of us disagree. I think, as Dick rightly pointed out, not many people do disagree. But I want to dig in to the developmental science of what I just proposed, that is the accumulation of a diverse array of opportunities. So accumulation 
because developmental theorists argue that there are multiplier effects whereby any one given opportunity has the potential to amplify the benefits of other opportunities. So that opportunities at home can amplify opportunities in the classroom. Opportunities in the classroom can amplify opportunities in the community, and vice versa in each of those directions, right? But also, it's about diversity. Turns out, the human brain, particularly the child brain, has evolved to thrive on diversity. Diversity of experience to be supported and challenged. So we've got accumulating diverse opportunities being critical, but let's put them together. Because there's another developmental principle that we begin to see back to Dick's point about who has the opportunities to thrive. When you place them side by side, you can recognize that with an accumulation of diverse opportunities, the unconditional odds of you experiencing the opportunity to choose your niche, or what developmental psychologists call niche picking, that is that place and space where your talents are beautifully aligned with the affordances of the environment. Or what we also call psychologists, goodness of fit between the person and their environments. Right? Goodness of fit for the future artist. Goodness of fit for the future engineer. Goodness of fit for the future dean of the School of Education. But as Dick pointed out, our odds are very, very low of that occurring for children at the low end of the income distribution because there are so few opportunities. We leave it up to very low likelihood so the child will randomly stumble across a person environment fit in which that beautiful alignment occurs. And this is what Mary recognized in knowing the status quo is not okay here, folks. This isn't all right. And we could and should if we have the brilliance of Mary and her team, know that we can systemize and individualize an accumulation of opportunity. And that individualization, referred to as tailoring in City Connects, is what is opening up person environment fit. That beautiful alignment between an individual child's portfolio of talents and the affordances of the environment. So I think that's one of the reasons when we keep testing it over and over again. It's moving the needle a little bit. Mary knew it wasn't just one program. There's not a magic one program solution out there. Because the problem is vast opportunity gaps and accumulation and diversity of experience. Thank you.